Friendlies, I'm Carolyn and welcome back to my RV life. Notice anything different? January, Arizona, hoodie, clouds. <laughs> I know, if you're wondering where the heck the sun and the warm weather is, so are we. This has definitely been the coldest winter I have ever spent in Arizona, my three years of coming here. Uh, it, it was in the 20s for a couple of nights and I was really grateful that I had my tank heaters and it's been in the 50s during the day and so it has been really, really cold. This is, uh, it's been at least sunny enough. I actually had to pull out my generator today because it's been cloudy all day and I'm going to need heat. But um, this is not a typical uh, January in Arizona, at least not in my experience of the last three years I've been coming here. Uh, so if you're coming down to the RTR, you're going to want to make sure you're prepared for unseasonably cool weather and uh, cool nights. And a lot of people who've been coming down to the R WRTR have been a little surprised at the cold weather. And uh, just make sure you take a look at the weather forecast. I looked in the next 10 days and the the warmest it's going to be is like 60 degrees with maybe low 60s with 40 at night and uh, anybody who's heading down you're going to want to be prepared for that. I did just want to do this quick update before I get into tonight's travel video. I decided that's kind of what I'm doing from now on. Sundays are the travel videos. I know a lot of you look forward to the Sunday videos and I love making the travel videos. But what I've done is completely skipped the next, um, I, I left you off at the Northern Lights in the Yukon, which was like two days before I made it to Whitehorse where Capone was diagnosed. And um, I skipped like the next month and a half. And <laughs> so fast forward, this video is Mammoth Lakes and it's starting to rain. So I'm gonna have to hurry up and wrap this up. So fast forward, um, it's about three weeks after Capone passed and I was back on the road trying to get back down to the desert and um, I had one one layover one night I spent I spent in Mammoth Lakes and I had some fuzzy visitors in camp so be sure to watch the video and see what that was all about and I visited a hot spring uh, I've never been much of a hot spring person but uh, I don't know something just really appealed to me about just being in uh, nature's warm bath <laughs> right? I don't know. Something just seemed uh, healing and um, something just seemed really appealing. And so uh, I actually ended up visiting three on my way down to the desert and I shot them all. And so tonight you're going to be able to see the first one. And um, it was Wild Willie's hot uh, hot springs natural hot springs just outside of mammoth lakes and so my journey had begun i'm um, getting down to the desert after spending time with friends and family uh in the pacific northwest in california uh, after capone passed and uh, i had a lot of really really rough days and um, i didn't cry too much in this video actually i only teared up i was really trying to be strong at that point um Travel days continued to be very hard and tra travel days, it's been three months now and travel days still kind of continue to be hard. Um, meeting so many amazing of you, <laughs> so many amazing friendlies at the WRTR. I am so glad I came. Last year, I didn't really spend a lot of time at, at WRTR. This year I'm in, on the advisory committee um, and just felt that I wanted to be here uh, for more of it. And I'm really glad I am. I'm meeting so many amazing women and uh, who are empowering me and motivating and encouraging me. And so I thank you all for that. I'm meeting patrons, I'm meeting friendlies, I'm meeting longtime viewers and new viewers. And uh, I appreciate every single one of you. And the, 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 the sisterhood that we're experiencing here has just been phenomenal and very healing. Uh, very healing. I'm, I'm definitely doing really good. Of course, I'm so busy right now um, that I don't really have time to, to think about my sadness too much. I mean, I still go back to my rig and look at videos of Capone, you know, when I'm editing and I, and I cry and I look at his, his collar hanging from my rear view mirror and I, I'm still sad. I miss him so much. And um, so many of you are, it's so surreal to see the impact that um, we have had on your lives and Capone. And a lot of people aren't really sure whether they should mention Capone when they meet me. They don't want to make me cry. Uh, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with crying. Crying is part of the healing process. And, uh, you know, we don't want to forget those that we loved um, who have gone on. We want to honor, at least I want to continue to honor him and honor his memory by remembering him and by hearing what you all love and miss about him. And so don't be afraid to, to express your condolences. It's very much appreciated. And um, uh, if you don't mind me crying, I don't mind me crying. Crying is not bad. 
Uh, we, I'm, I, I'm so um, concerned is the word that comes to mind about us as hu- hu- about humanity and about why natural feelings and emotions that are what make us human, right? He, emotions and feelings are what make us human. It's what sets us apart from other species and even dogs. Dogs don't, well, they do cry, they whine. Um, but the, you know, the humanity and, and, and I'm just uh, really uh, taken aback by how uncomfortable we have become with what is most human about us, and that is our emotions. Sadness, and, and, and of course, in my deepest, saddest days, I had lots of times to contemplate sadness and grief. And it almost seems to me that as deep as it felt, and old, and deep, and raw, I just started thinking this has got to be one of the oldest feelings, one of the oldest experience of Homo sapien. Um, it's just, it felt just so, I mean, I literally could almost feel the grief going back centuries and millennia throughout time and throughout humanity. Um, I don't know. There's been a lot of talk lately. I've seen some shows and I've seen some talk about in- ancestral memories that, that somehow in our DNA, we carry memories in our history through, and some people even say they have memories and they have visions. And I don't know, I'm starting to kind of really be interested in that and really think about that and 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 consider it and if we think i mean it, it makes sense right that all of our ancestors for thousands of years is in our dna um it kind of makes sense that our our emotions and probably fear maybe anger i don't know i wonder if anger you know i don't know are there any um and uh, sociological anthropologists would that be the right one yeah sociological anthropologists out there who can answer that question about you know some of our oldest and most um um original uh emotions i, I swear grief has to be one of them i it, i mean that has to be like one of the things that separated us from other species is grief but other species actually do experience grief don't they dogs do and i'm sure the um you know um apes and stuff do. I don't know. I went off on a little bit of a tangent, but something, these are the things I think about. And that is definitely something I thought about deep in my grief, just how old it felt. You know, some people say people are old souls, but that grief just felt so primal, so old and so primal and so deep. Uh, And so it amazes me that so many people want to deny it. But I, I guess it shouldn't surprise me because isn't our modern day society and culture really uh, so much about denying um, what is real and true about us and um, the consumerism and all kinds of stuff. Um, I, <laughs> I'm feeling rather introspective today. And I think being at the WRTR with so many women who are choosing a different life path away from the consumerism and so many minimalists here and um, those of us who have just decided to break the chains of uh, what bind us to something that doesn't make any doesn't make sense anymore is maybe you know kind of got me thinking and got me reflecting again. I don't know. What do you think? Um, what do you think about emotion? What do you think about the people who, or what do you think about emotion and expressing emotion and um, why we're taught to not feel emotion? And I was just talking to a couple women and especially men. Uh, you know, I feel really bad for men who are told from boyhood, you know, be a man, man up, be a man. You can't cry. You're a sissy if you show any feelings. And I feel really sad. And I think that's probably why so many uh, a lot of men, you know, who, who, who comment and just tell me to, um, STFU, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and, uh, stop being a whiner and stop being a victim. I think it's because maybe they aren't able to get in touch with their own, um, real emotion. And so it turns into anger. At least that's the conversation I just had with one of my friends. And that was her take on it that, you know, grief and sadness, um, squashed down becomes anger and that makes sense so um anyway that's where i'm at today lots to think about lots to ponder as i still go through the process of losing my best friend boy i miss him so much and um but being surrounded by tons of new friends and um, boy the support and um women are awesome (laughs) women are really awesome um boy and i really i think needed to be surrounded by wonderful, strong women. So thank you all that I have met and who have been um, holding me um, and allowing me to be me. 
thank you. All right, enjoy this video, Mammoth Lakes and Hot Springs, and there will be more to come. And I'll see you all soon. Well, I'll see many of you soon at the RTR and those I don't won't see at the RTR. I will see you in the next video. She's got two itty bitty cubs with her. I was walking, keeping my eye out. And I looked up and there she was probably about as far away as she is now. Oh, yeah, there's the baby. Can you see? The baby. So I um, looked up and there she was. In the road. And she just stared at me. And I slowly started backing up. I was like, hey bear, I'm okay. And then I looked over and saw that her, she had treed her cubs. I'm aiming really bad here, trying to see if we can see the cubs. There. Oh, there it is. I can see movement. I'm not sure I got it. She might be watching me. I might need to... I ran... Anyway, I looked up. Or she looked up. I looked up. We were looking at each other, and I'm slowly, slowly backing away. And actually, as soon as I talked to her is when she went over toward her cubs. And that's when I actually noticed the cubs. I noticed one. And then as she started walking away from me, I think I saw two. And I went back and got my camera. I mean, the last thing I, I want to do is um, make her feel like I'm circling and trying to get her cubs. My rig is right here, by the way. <laughs> so... And I've got my bear spray. I grab my bear spray when I grab my camera. Is that her? Is that mama? Looking at me? I can't tell. No, I think it's just a tree. They're over there, though. And I'd like to circle around and try... Oh, there's one. Is that a baby? Oh, yep, look. <sighs> Is that mama or baby? Oh, look, oh, look, 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 look. Okay, crap. Can, oh, I think that's, can you see both babies? No, I think it's just one. Oh, no, there's the other one. There's two babies. Sorry, this is so wobbly because all I have, I don't have a tripod, of course. And when you're the zoomed in this much, every shake shows. Yeah, I guess I'm feeling pretty bold after my grizzly encounter. I don't know, black bears aren't as uh, scary to me. Maybe I should be more scared right now. I don't know. But she knows I'm human. And I'm far enough away. I moved away when I saw her, so that wasn't a threat. I'm talking. Okay, I don't think we're going to be able to see him anymore. Oh, I should have brought my binoculars, actually. Out. So, I'm camped in a, a bear's territory, which means I'm just going to have to be careful when I come outside. Just make sure I scan. 
make noise as I'm coming out. Last thing I want to do, because now I know it's a mama and her cubs too. So the last thing I want to do is startle her. So she's probably going to be, this is probably her territory. I wasn't sure how long I was going to stay here. And now I know I'm probably just going to stay here the one night. Because I'm not going to really feel comfortable walking around here. You know, just going for a leisurely walk. So I'm going to have to be on guard. Knowing that there is a bear in the area. All right. She knows where I am, I'm sure, even though I can't see her anymore. And this is, like, even when I saw the grizzly, when I was in Denali, the one thing I wanted to make sure is I didn't want her to think I was circling around. Isn't that kind of what predators do, right? They circle back around and try to sneak up from another angle. Well, that's the last thing I want Mama Bear to think I'm doing. So, but again, I'm human. And we're not a threat. As long as we keep our distance. So, alright, anyway. Home for the night. Rough day on the road without Capone today. Very rough day. A mama bear and her cubs in California. I don't see them anymore. But she knows I'm here. But we both did exactly what we're supposed to do. I backed away slowly. Did not turn my back on her ever. And uh, she just moved her cubs away. Slowly. <laughs> Got my heart racing. Hi. Uh, it's going to be in the 30s tonight. And so I pulled out the generator to keep my batteries charged in case I need heat. Which means I'm going to have to go out in the dark. <laughs> and pulled out my headlamp, which I finally found. And I'll just have to make a lot of noise when I go out. But I'm really curious to see if she's going to come check me out. There's nobody else out here in this area. Down the road, like not even a half a mile, I saw somebody else camped. So... Um, there are people here and I'm only like 10 miles from a town, a pretty big town. So, uh, yeah, not too remote. So the bears here are probably used to seeing people. Exciting. I have not ever had a bear. Well, it wasn't in my camp, but I mean, what? 50, I keep going football field. 50 yards, I think from camp is where I saw her. So it's the closest I have ever, uh, I really want to see if she's going to come into camp. Get some great pictures if she does. I see something. <laughs> this is me. This is what I do. Especially when there's something of interest and to take my mind off of my really sad life. And I'm not going to go there. It's been a rough day. She might be over there. It's dark. Um, that looks too black. She was brown. In case you don't know. Well, we have, I think we have brown bears and, see that? Oh. We have black bears and brown bears, I think, in California. But black bears can be brown. It's really confusing. Okay, you're not going to be able to see anything. And I think it's just a tree that I'm seeing. Alright, anyway. This is going to be like really raw. Watching for the bear. Alright, I'll let you know if they come. I need to get set up. That really looks like a bear, but I think it's a tree trunk. Alright, I need to get set up. Bye. I usually start closing things up. Um, put my uh, Reflectix on the windshield to hold in the warmth because it's getting cold outside. But I have a feeling she might come visit. Bears are really curious, and she might want to come check out my camp. I don't know, though, if she would do that with cubs. Anyway, I'm going to be on guard. My generator is out. <laughs> um, it's going to be, like, in the 30s tonight. This is 
just what the doctor ordered. They're healing, right? And it's Friday morning, and so far I have it all to myself. Yay. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am so glad I did this. Can you see the view up there? That is the Eastern Sierras. temperature is 100, 100 something. I think it's 100, just, just at 100, 100 point something. These are the mountains. I hiked on the other side of the John Muir Trail. So on the other side of these are the John Muir Trail. So I'm near Mammoth Lakes, uh, which is up there. And that was a resupply point for me, Red's Meadow. So I can't remember, I'm gonna have to look at my maps to remember what part of the trail is before Mammoth Lakes. Evolution Basin? Or is that after? I can't remember. And Mount Whitney is down there somewhere. Uh, and I can never... I've climbed it, I've been to the top, and I have no idea what it looks like from the bottom because it's just part of a range of other jagged peaks. And I don't think I'm close enough. Actually, I don't think I can see it from here. I think it's hidden. Because even though it's the highest peak in um, um, the contiguous U.S., uh, it is... Just barely, I think, the highest peak here. So there's 13,000, 13,500 peaks all around it. So it's kind of hard to tell. And it's easy to get hidden. Ah. What a great way to start off my day. So what'd you think about that video? That was kind of fun, huh? Uh, another bear encounter. I think bears are just kind of following me now. <laughs> it was kind of nice to have something furry around me missing my bud. So um, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you enjoyed uh, the hot spring. I hope, how many of you love hot springs or have never had a chance to experience a natural hot spring? There's something else. It was really nice. And like I said, I have a couple more I have a couple more hot springs um, through California and Nevada coming up. So be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to see those. And if you want some of this stuff in real time, my patrons got to see a lot of this in raw real time uh, several months ago when it happened. And so if you want more real time videos, if you want bloopers, if you want, I have as many uh, as 500 extra videos and posts on Patreon. And so if you want access to those and you want to help support this channel so that I can keep making videos, uh, click the Actually, why don't we put a link up here? Click up here and you can join Patreon and you can be uh, in the know about um, what's going on in my life real time. <laughs> if, you, if you care about such a thing. Um, I'm also hosting Patreon only meet and greets at the RTR and um, um, they get special contests and all kinds of stuff. So thank you all so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed it. One thing I'm going to say before I go. There's nothing like the smell of rain in the desert. Especially when there's a lot of sage. Oh, it's just, and I can smell something now. It's kind of sweet. It's beautiful. And it's just a tiny little bit of rain, but it makes something come alive and it just smells so good. It's really nice. Okay, I hope you enjoyed hanging with me again today. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. I'll see you soon. Bye.